Hey everybody, welcome back. So, next what we're going to do is we're going to build a workbench. Um, workbench is the centerpiece of everybody's shop and everybody needs one. The type of bench I'm going to build is, it's going to be a butcher block top um, with 2x4s glued together, kind of like you see here. Um, these aren't glued, they're just laid in place. When you put these together like this, what it does is when you put them on end, it gives you an incredible amount of strength. Um, these things are not going to break and a bench like this, if done right, should last you a lifetime. So these are just regular stock 2x4s um, from Home Depot or Lowe's. I picked these up at Lowe's. One thing I forgot to mention um, when selecting your boards from, from the lumber yard, make sure you hand select every board and take your time. It's actually very important that you select good boards out of the lot. Just really take your time, inspect every board, look up and down it from all angles, make sure it's straight. Uh, make sure it doesn't have any big knots or big chips taken out um, along the edges or really anywhere in the board actually. We want these things as straight and clean as possible to give us a good work top and a good surface for the glue to attach to each other and when it's put all together we don't want any big voids or any structural issues with this so take your time don't feel rushed pick through every single board hand select them and that's just a good tip. I already went ahead and ripped these on the table saw and got rid of the rounded edges here so it's perfectly square. I don't own a table saw so I borrowed one from a friend. Um, I, I think you'll find that most people, I mean maybe one out of four guys have a table saw. So if you don't have one you shouldn't have too much trouble finding one or finding somebody with one that you could borrow. But here I went ahead and I ripped about a quarter inch off each side and I think that did pretty good. It got rid of the round. These all fit up pretty flush. I didn't film a whole lot of the table saw work, but I'll flash up a few photos and maybe a few clips from that right here if you want to take a look. The size of the workbench is obviously going to depend on what you're going to use it for and what space you're going to put it in. So for me, I'm going to be building a pretty small one um, because this is my first time doing it also. So I want to make sure I do it right and kind of start small and the space I'm putting it in is not very large at all. So when I'm done, the bench top will be, should be four feet by two feet deep, four feet long, two feet deep. These are 8 foot 2 by 4s so what I'll do is I'll cut them in half so I'll have 4 foot lengths. And the actual dimensions of a 2 by 4 I'm sure most people know, but if not, um, they're not actually 2 inches by 4 inches. They come 1 and a half inches by 3 and a half inches. <clears throat> so they're 1 and a half thick. And I bought a total of 8, I'm going to cut them in half, so they'll give me 16. 16 put together will give me 2 feet deep. So I think that'll be a pretty good size um, for me at least starting out and who knows maybe down the road I'll build another one of these and make it a lot bigger. So you might be thinking how, how am I going to glue these together without any clamps? How's the average guy um, just starting out supposed to make a butcher block top without any long wood clamps to hold it together while the glue dries? Well so I picked up some threaded rod and Anybody can pick this up for relatively cheap. Um, I think each one of these rods cost me um, $3.50, something like that. Maybe closer to $4. Um, and this is 3 8 inch, so um, pretty stout, pretty stout. And I think 3 8 inch should, should be pretty good. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill holes through these 2x4s and run these all the way through and put a nut on each side and torque them down and then that should apply some good compression throughout while it dries up. And I think I'll leave the threaded rod in for the life of the bench because I mean it can't hurt and they'll always be there to tighten up if you ever need to and I mean it'll, it'll just only apply extra strength to the bench. So I'll, I'll probably leave those in there. Here's a threaded rod I picked up. Like I said, it's a 3 8 inch. And then I have a nut and washer for each end. 
one nut mosh will go on this end, the other one will be go all the way down on this other end. Um, the wood glue I got is also from Lowe's. It's Type Bond, Type Bond 2 premium wood glue. Um, read about the stuff, should should do the trick, should should be great for what we're doing here. Um, but so we'll see, that's what I'm planning on using. Anyway, enough of that. Um, let's get to it. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to measure out the midpoint of every one of these um, pieces of wood. And I'm going to go take a, just a hand circular saw and cut them right in half. And then that should be our full length and I can stock them up for our full depth of this table. Off camera, I just went through every board again and double checked. Um, I put lines lengthwise here. I checked each measurement to make sure I'm dead center in the middle of each board. So now I'm ready to take these over, get the circular saw out, and make the cuts. Alright everyone, I made a mistake and I don't want you guys to do the same thing. It'll be okay, but um, just when you're doing this, be really careful. Um, if you do decide to cut your 2x4s in half, um, be careful with the circular saw. Make sure you go all the way through um, before you stop your cut. I My saw didn't go all the way through. There's this last corner and I stopped my cut and let go and um, the wood split. and rip this piece off so I got a nice indent here on my end and piece here I'll end up breaking this off I'm probably not going to try to glue it in there or anything I'll probably just live with the gap and probably just put this on the make sure this is on the underside so I don't have to ever see it and it's not gonna it's not gonna be an issue um, ultimately it'll, it'll be fine I probably will never even notice just a heads up pay attention and um, take your time with these cuts that's a reason why it's probably a good idea to actually just buy an extra board um, when you're at the store. Um, one extra board just in case you do make an error like that. Um, I could have, I got lucky I didn't make any errors with the table saw. Everything came out nicely there, um, but I did make an error with the circular saw. So it's probably a good idea to buy an extra board. Also, if you find one of your boards kind of got past your inspection at the store and it has too many knots or it's not as straight as you would like, you could just swap that out for one of the extras too. So um, when you go to get your supplies, keep that in mind. Might be a good thing to get some extra wood. These cheap plastic saw horses are only 22 inches long. Um, so not all of my boards fit stacked up on there. My bench is gonna be 24 inches deep. Um, so that's an issue. Not so much of a problem now, but when I go to do the glue up, that is gonna be a problem. So I'll have to figure something out for that. Next, I'm going to go through every board and make sure the orientation is how I want it. Um, make sure there's no huge knots on the top side. Um, just make sure the boards are in a good order. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to number each one in the order that I want them to be placed with the top side up. And that way, when I go to do the glue up and um, I go to drill the holes for the threaded rod, it'll all be organized in a quicker process. I'll be able to refer back to that number system. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now.
So next step is I'm setting my template to drill all the holes um, in these boards for the threaded rod. I'm going to start with the first piece. Now you want to pick your best board pretty much, or it doesn't have to be your best, but pretty good looking board because this is going to be your front piece. This is going to be the piece that um, you'll be looking at for the rest of your life when you're working on this bench. So um, once you find a good board, you're going to want to go through and mark out your locations for your drill and your holes. I did with tiny little dots here, um, here and here. I'm going to have four pass-through holes. They're spaced at a little over a foot apart from each other and I'm five inches from the edge here. And I'm countersinking. I'm going to countersink the nut and washer so when we're at the edge of the bench it can either get pushed flush against the wall or um, when you're walking by it, um, your shorts or shirt or whatever, whatever you're working on is not going to get snagged on a, a, a nut head sticking out of the side here like that. Um, that would get annoying for quite a few reasons I think. I'm countersinking it and as you can see a washer and a nut will fit in there nicely and then you'll have a nice flush surface here. And so what I used, I used one of these, this is a 7 8 bit to do the countersink and then um, you just go ahead and drill your through hole for your threaded rod. Mine's a 3 8 inch threaded rod. You could do it for whatever size you'd like, but that's just how I'm doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and drill the rest of the holes on this front template plate. All right, now I'm gonna start transferring holes from this front piece on to the rest of the pieces um, and just by using this front piece as a template. Um, so it's the best way I know how to do it. Once I pass all the way through, I'm gonna take the threaded rod, feed it through there to hold it in place and then go on do the next hole, the next hole and so on. And then just repeat that process until um, I've drilled a hole through every single board. So hopefully that works. We'll see how it goes. Alright, so I think you guys probably get the idea about transferring the holes in the method I'm using right here. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer the rest off camera and I will touch back with you guys when I'm done. Hopefully all goes well and hopefully these all fit up when I'm done. So stay tuned.